76ers go on to win 102-97. Shannon, did MB deserve a flagrant one and Harden that flagrant two? I thought the foul should have been flipped. I thought James Harden deserved a flagrant one, Skip, because he's making a basketball play because what he's trying to do is get the guy's hands off him. You know, you put, you try to you try to hand check the guy. He tries to knock his hand off, and guess what? His hand wasn't there, and his hand goes into his midsection. Joel and B, Skip, that's not a basketball play. You're laying on the floor. You kick up. That's exce- I mean, that's that's not a basketball play. It's unnecessary and it's excessive. And Joel and B said, Skip, you can see the game plan. Got to hit him. Try to make him frustrated so he can get injected. So I'm mature. Just put myself in position where I'm going to be where I'm going to be ejected. So I just went about my business, and we got the win. You kicked the guy. So how are you going about your business? Theoretically, they did what they set out to do. If, if what you're saying is true, they were trying to hit you, get you frustrated, get you out of your game to get ejected, it worked because you kicked the man. Is that what you normally do in a game? Is mm. kick someone? That's not a basketball play. Mm. So I thought the foul should have been flipped. I thought James Harden deserved the I don't think James Harden deserved to get from a flagrant two? <sighs> Skip, that's not a flagrant two. No. I thought the foul should have been flipped. I thought Joel and Bede deserved a flagrant two. I think I thought James Harden deserved a flagrant one. It's going to be interesting to see, considering how they're calling it now, and mm-hmm. what if Joe Dumars intervened and says, okay, now nah, you got to be gone for a game. So it's going to be interesting to see how the NBA looks at this, because I do think Joel and Bede uh, uh, play was unnecessary. Mm. Wait, gone for a game after you weren't even ejected during that game? Good. Huh, interesting. That would be the ultimate flip. Okay, I'm going to start with James Harden. This is just me. I've been watching this game, covering this game for a long, long, maybe too long of a time. Th- that wasn't even a foul to me. <laughs> and it felt like a makeup call because it felt like the crew was on thin ice, on th- just on the edge of everybody's seats, on the edge of their mind seats, thinking, oh, my God, oh, my God, should we have, should we have? Right. Oh, well, let's. Let's toss him, and then we'll we'll make it all clean, right? right, we'll, right. we'll make up the this to the Brooklyn Nets, and everything will be right. okay. So you say you think they should, they're saying they should have thrown Joel out? Okay, no, I'm okay. not saying okay. that at all. But I'm starting with the Harden. It, it it escalated to the point where, for me, in my mind's eye, having seen James do that ten thousand times right. in his life, it's it's part and parcel of his bag. It's what he does. Right. He uses his offhand to create a little space, especially when a Royce O'Neal, as were all the Brooklyn Nets, they are getting up into your right. space, right. into you physically, bumping you, grinding you. And James is just saying, I, I'm using my offhand to just try to create a little bit of space so I can get free of, of all of his physicality. Right. It's just basketball. It's called NBA playoff basketball. Obviously, it sounds like grumpy old man talk, but back in the 80s or even the 90s, that, that's like, it's, it's not even a thought of, it's not even a foul thought. Right. It's a play on. It just happens. It's, it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Right. You, you just kind of fight back by saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you a little bit. He, his hand, I'm talking about James, his hand is cupped. It's, it's not like right. he balls his fist right, and trying right. to hit yeah. him in the private. Yeah, it's like he's trying to get his yeah. hands off him. Right, and, and I don't think he was aiming at his privates. Maybe it brushed against the midsection. I, I, I can't, I'm sorry, right. I can't see that. I lost my mind on that one. Now back to the first one that triggered all of okay. the above. For me... I liked the way they called it because I believe you are discounting the fact that Claxton had just dunked on him, had been all over him from the start. This is only three minutes into the game. Right. It was clear they were going to play extremely physically with Joel because it's about the only hope that you have. Is there any other way to play? No. He's two of Charles Claxton. Okay. Nick Claxton. Nick, Nick Claxton. And Claxton manages to dunk on him. Then He steps over him, which is the ultimate disrespectful basketball play. Maybe not a football play, but but it's a basketball disrespect. You you cannot disrespect a man any more than when he is down, you straddle him. You step. Okay, you it's it's the AR and Ty Lu. But this is even worse. He is glowering down at him, standing over him. You, You are asking for it. Okay, so this is just me. If Joel Embiid had actually wanted, with with this man standing over him, straddling him, if Joel had wanted to kick him right in the privates, he would have kicked him right in the privates. 
That was a kick of just get up off me. That was a kick of get out of my space. But it was what? What'd you say it was? It was a kick. Okay. Okay. But the point of contact to me was upper back leg, upper back leg, right. maybe up into the buttocks region. And it's the opposite side of the body from privates, right. okay? So if it, it, it's not aimed at the privates because if he's right there, you know what I, I'm talking about, straddling, and you say, okay, I'm gonna get even with you. If you wanna kick him in the privates, you're going to hit his privates because he is totally exposed to said kick. Mm -hmm. But instead, Joel is just saying, just get out of here, get get away, because Joel is thinking, I'm about to win the MVP, and you, Nick Claxton, cannot get away with doing that to me. It's just, it, it, it's manhood versus manhood out on the basketball okay. court. That's, that's what it is. So I'm going to take into account, I'm going to put into context the fact that Nick Claxton is asking for it, and that Joel is, is retaliating during the act as opposed to Draymond, who remember, yes, Sabonis started it with, you could call it a dirty play or a crafty play, whatever you want to call it. He grabbed his ankle so that Draymond couldn't beat him up the court. Correct. And he hung on for a second, I don't know, and then he let go. Right. And now, or Draymond's actually pulling free of him, but Draymond has pulled completely free, so the act is over. And Draymond then sort of goes back with a stomp and, and again, I told you the, the day after the stomp happened, in and of itself, just, just right there in and of itself, I, I don't think it's a big deal. It's, it's not big enough to me to, to be ejectionable. Okay? I, I still think it does, Skip, because not only was it unnecessary, it was excessive because he stomped him. Okay. I can see, Skip, if, you know, you tried to pull your leg off and you were like, you step on him as okay. you're going forward. But, but I but, gave Draymond a slight break there because... Sabota started, yes, okay? Yeah, okay, and he okay, finished then, yeah, it, yes, okay? He yes, finished right. it, but but in the context, if I'm refereeing, if I'm in Secaucus, New Jersey, and I'm in the, in looking at the big picture, I'm saying, okay, Sabona started it, he finished it. Let, let's move on right. with flagrants. You, you get a technical, you get a flagrant right. one, right. But, but I'm not going to toss you okay. out of the game. Right. But Draymond, a, as they're reviewing the play, loses his mind as he always does. Right. And, and it's antics, and then we can go into why was he suspended? Well, as Joe Dumar said, uh, well, it's body of work. It's, uh, what, what was his exact quote about Joe Dumars? What did he call it? Uh, hold on, let me get this quote here. Uh, it, it was excessive over, over the top actions, right. conduct detrimental, and repeat offender. Right. So, all those things are operating in the minds of the people trying to review this play right. as it's unfolding live. Right. And they finally decide, okay, he's gone. Right. Because it's Draymond, and nobody has a worse track record right. in that context than Draymond Do does. Do you think that's what saved him be because he doesn't have that track record? He doesn't have nearly. In fact, I, I checked out on the, the, the career negative stats on these guys. Draymond has 169 <laughs> technical fouls in his career to 58 for Embiid. So jo Joel's not no choir boy, right, you know, right, like he, he, he's got his right, share right. too, okay? But if we look at ejections, Draymond's been ejected 17 times to Joel's one time. Well, that's, that sort of sums it up right, right there. So then we got flagrant fouls. It, 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 not uh, close, it's yeah. not even close, but it's 19. And then suspensions. Draymond's been suspended four times to Joel's one time. Joel did get suspended once for two games for fighting. So again, Joel is is not holier than thou when it comes to this, but he's he's no Draymond. Right. So I do believe that in the context, they're going to give Joel a slightly better okay. break than they are to Draymond. Okay. That's just me. But in in the biggest picture, I didn't like the quote that you read from uh, from Joel because he's saying I'm I'm too mature to get. No, no, you're not because I I don't like that he kicked. Right. But but I I'm going to give him a break of. I'm not going to toss him out of the game for it okay. because Claxton is asking for some right. kind of retaliation. And then McClaxton already knows he has a text and then he dunks on him again okay. and then he glares at him. Okay. Again, do I care that much? It, if I put in the vacuum, the, the taunting glare, yeah. I don't know. I, I can't get real worked up about it, but the game was teetering on out of control. They wanted to get under control. Yes. And, and they just wanted to, to regain control, the referees. And they're like, uh-oh, is this going to lead to another fracas, an incident, or, or is this going to lead to some kind of fisticuffs? And so they just say, okay, 
Nick Claxton, you are gone with the second technical. So I, I understand it, but if, if we put these plays in vacuums, in vacuums, I, I see them differently than I do in context, especially Draymond versus Sabonis. Right. Okay, so, so again, I like the way they refereed the first incident because, y yeah, it's, it's a technical foul and, and a flagrant one, but it's not a flagrant two, it's not an ejection. And Joel stayed in the game, and it did give Philly a better chance. Yeah. But I got to tell you, I, I didn't love the way Joel reacted the rest of the game because he was incredibly frustrated all night. And his numbers are all career low type numbers. Oh, They're, Tyrese Maxey saved him. He saved him. Besides Tyrese Maxey, we went, uh, I did. mean, James Harden leaving. Yeah. And, and, and Joel Embiid, as you mentioned, not having the type of game that we're expecting Joel no. Embiid to have, especially once Nick Claxton leaves yeah. the ball game. Skip yeah. that garden with, with Royce O'Neal and Dorian Finney Smith, guys they, they that's giving up seven, eight inches and probably 100 pounds. They, they went all small. Yeah. They, they just gave up. Well, they, they'd lost Claxton, obviously. Right. And <clears throat> they just attacked Joel just the way the Clippers are attacking Kevin Durant because when Durant gets the ball, he's got two or three all right, over him, right. and he's being overwhelmed. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. But Joel was a little overwhelmed by the double teams because he hasn't seen such ferocious double teams during the year. Nobody right. really played him And like then when this. he thought it was coming, they didn't come. No, they didn't come, and he seemed completely right. – it worked. Right. They, they did the best job they could on him until the bitter end when Dinwiddie tried him one last time, if we could see that, and Joel did one good thing all night. Really, just only one good thing. He blocked Dinwiddie. Oh, yeah. And he barely got it, but he got it. Yeah. He, he barely got it before it hit the glass. But here's Dinwiddie saying, I think I'm going to try you. No, no, sorry, because he did have five fouls. And he barely got He just barely got, got it, it, but that, that was game saver yeah. right there. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And as I keep tweeting, Tyrese Maxey has turned into my favorite NBA player because he is so much fun to watch and so explosive. James is kicked out, and Tyrese said, okay, it up. I got he you. He it up, Skip. And he scored the most clutch time points in the last 25 years in a playoff game. He scored 10 in clutch time, that late and close time. Yeah. And it was the most since, as you mentioned, Allen Iverson had scored 12, I believe, but it was 25 years ago. Right. So my point is... That was sensational. Yes. And he is sensational. He he is, he's turning into, I, I don't know if I need to put this pressure on him, but he looks like a star to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he's the third star who can be the second best player on the team, although James was really good in the time that he oh, played. Oh, James, James was playing really well. Yeah. I mean, he might be he might be the second option because James only signed a one-year deal. Uh, I got What it. transpires with that? Yeah, but whatever the Sixers are, they're going to have to be right here right now because you know and I know it'll probably blow up after this. A absolutely. And James wants to go back to Houston. But you know what, Skip? You're right. I, I think the thing is with Joel Embiid only having 14 points. Joel, yeah, Joel Embiid only having 14 points, and somehow they're still finding a way to win this ball game. The Brooklyn played as well as they could possibly play, except probably skip the last couple of minutes of the game. They did give a, a couple of uncontested threes that really hurt them. But Tyrese Maxey started pulling them from 26, 27 feet. I mean, what do you want to do with that? He's coming off from – they went under the screen, and they're not expecting him to shoot. They're expecting him to try to go all the way to the rim, yep. and he just elevates. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> this, this kid's got big you-know-what. Yeah. You know, he, he will take and make the biggest shots. Yes. And – he has so much fun playing basketball. And it was kind of a game saver the, the way he took the game over. Joel saved it with the block because the game in and of itself was hard to watch. Yeah. We had incidents all over the place. Right. We had referees losing control, trying to regain control to a fault. And we had Brooklyn playing the kind of scrappy basketball yeah. that's hard to it's hard right. to watch because it gets ugly after a while. You know what it is, Skip? It's kind of like when you in college when they have that one big man like you used to watch Virginia with Ralph Sampson, and everybody had those little guys and they just frustrated. Yeah. And he couldn't get a shot up. They played as well. And PJ Tucker probably got two or three of the biggest offensive rebounds of his life. He did. They gave but, them but he is good at that. And, That's and, what he's done his know, whole career. Exactly. He, he's not giving you the – and, you know, he nor, he's normally really good yep. on short corner three, Skip. Yep. He hadn't been that good in this series. But those offensive rebounds, mm -hmm. they give them a second crack when that, – that was that was huge. And But it, uh, <laughs> because the Nets are so small, Skip, they got crushed on the glass again. Yep. And you know they're going to really get crushed once Claxton goes out. Yeah. Because he's their biggest guy. And he's only, what, like 6'9"? Yeah. So now you play with Royce O'Neal and you play with Dinwiddie and you play with uh, uh, Mikael Bridges. Yeah. <laughs> so the big picture of this is 
the two players I love the most long term, Durant, and then I've been pushing for Embiid to win MVP all year. Mm -hmm. They're both seeing defenses they didn't see all year. That maybe, except Kevin, it started with Boston a year ago right. in the playoffs. That the Celtics wrote the book on how right. to play Kevin in the postseason, and now the Clippers are executing the book. Well, my point is, without book, as in Devin Booker, that they're going to lose yeah, we because are. Both, he's out his mind right now. Both, both Kevin and Embiid look overmatched against these these come one come all defenses where as soon as they touch the ball it's two or three are coming right. to them and saying well you just can't beat us and yet the last time I saw we're going to talk about this a little later in the show but here comes Boston and Philadelphia that's it's looming oh, it's gonna okay it sure it looks like inevitable. it because it looks like to me that the Celtics would go up 3-0 at Atlanta tonight mm -hmm. and that would be 3-0 3-0 so collision right. course and Yet, the last time I saw Philly play Boston, I, it looked like they tried to double and beat, and he didn't even care. Remember, right. he just kept pulling up from 15, yeah. 17 yeah. feet and yeah. just killing him, scored you know, you, I, I can live with that, but I can't, leave, I can't live with him putting him on the foul line. I can't yeah. live with him living in the paint. I, Skip, if you're going to hit 15 to 17 footers, you yeah. can live with that. But what you can't live with of him going 20 or 23 from the free throw line. Okay, well, what did he do <laughs> last night? Why was this a, a contest? He shot five total free yes. throws. This is a man who averages 12 free throws a game. This is a man who led the league making 10 right. free throws a yeah. game. Well, when he makes four free throws, it's it's a precipitous you drop. You, 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 you won, and you were in position to steal the game. Right. Or in, this, this was a home game for Brooklyn to win the game. Right. And if they had, all of a sudden you're like, uh-oh, is this a series? And, and you're going to take your pound of flesh from them because you're going to drag, drag this out. series right. out. And they needed to stay on course with Boston because now both teams are set up to get some rest before next weekend when the semifinals would start. Right. Okay, so then now we get to the ultimate question again. Do, do you really believe that Joe Dumars and company upstairs at the NBA office, will they reassess this? Will they take such a public beating over their decision on the fly last night that they'll say we got to take a game well, away from Joel? I, I don't think that the way they operate is that they're looking at it publicly because publicly yeah. they've taken a beating for suspending Draymond. A lot of people don't think Draymond, but you have to do what you <laughs> feel is in the best interest of the game. And given Draymond's history yeah. and, the, and the antics that came along with it afterwards, yeah, I, I think that was the right decision. Um, I, I do agree with you. I think it's going to be a little harder because you didn't, you didn't, you, Skip, you didn't, you didn't eject the guy. You didn't eject him, no. but somehow you come back and suspend him for a game? Now, they might come back and say that may, maybe it should have been a, a flagrant two. Maybe they should have, they upgraded, yeah. but, and then that's, that's a okay, bigger fine. It's after the fact, right, it doesn't really correct, matter. Correct, correct. And, and the only thing Philly's got going for it, and maybe even the league office, if they really wanted to make good on this in, in their eyes, mm -hmm. I, I don't believe they need to or, or should, but mm -hmm. if they did, at least you know in the back of your minds Philly's up 3-0. So, so if you if you bust him the the one game, it's it's the second game at Brooklyn, the fourth game of the series. Right. And even if they lose, they're, they're, they're probably good. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they could go home and finish it off. Right. And then you you rightfully punished, you judiciously punished Joel Embiid. <laughs> I, I don't want to see that happen. I don't believe it will happen. I but mean, and Philly only shot 13 free throws. Philly, I yes. know. Jay, uh, uh, Joel Embiid normally shoots that by himself. Okay, but who was the aggressor last night? Yeah. Who who attacked on defense? Well, it, it was the home team yes. last night. Yeah. And in the Clippers-Phoenix game, the, the Clippers played defense. It's so funny. We, we've always talked about Kawhi and PG, the two best tandem perimeter defenders. Not anymore. That, that's a thing of the past. But, yeah. But last night, you want to talk about team defense for Ty Lue? Yeah. You want to talk about strategic brilliance yeah. where every time down, I'm looking at, wait, I, that's a new wrinkle. That's a new wrinkle. He did every – he pulled out yeah. every stop to stop Kevin Durant. Right. Now, they didn't stop Devin Booker. Yeah, because yeah. Devin – because Book, like, I ain't going side to side. I'm going down here. Y'all ain't got Zubash. Y'all got no shot blockers. That's so correct. once 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 he broke the initial and drove the lane, Skip, yeah. it was layup, layup. <laughs> Yeah. So in the end, I'm okay with the way it was okay. refereed, except for the Harden call. But in the end, yeah. Philly survived. Philly won. Yeah. All is well that ended well for them. I thought, Skip, when I saw James Harden walking up, I thought he was hurt. I didn't realize he, I'm like, hold on. You probably had the sound. Yeah, down. I did. Yeah. I had the sound down. So I just see him walking back to the locker. I said, oh, I hope you're okay. He, he was... <laughs> 
truly, authentically shocked. Yes. Like, seriously, and as he said after the game, I didn't even think I fouled him. Right. Like, I didn't think I, I, I flagrant too. Yeah, that's, that's, that, was, that, that was excessive. Okay, that's makeup because they're still not sure about how they ruled over oh, Joel. Mm -hmm. So, like, okay, are we good now? Right. Okay. I and Tony guess. Brothers, he was voted the best uh, NBA official. He was, you know what? That's a good point in that The Athletic, the athletic uh, poll. Anonymous yeah. poll. He was number one. Yeah. So he was the one presiding. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take that. A lot of people would say those calls decided the outcome of this one, guys. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Subscribe here to get the very latest from Skip and Shannon. Plus, go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.